Okay, speed run time. title this video my fastest ever brushless conversion but I went through about four different titles on the way to getting that first was gonna be the one thing you should do with the Traxxas Vortec 3.0 the second was the first thing you shouldn't do with the Traxxas Vortec 3.0 and the fourth one was I'm a tough no way Traxxas tough that's because if you are wondering what a Traxxas Vortec 3.0 looks like after a head-on crash with a curb at 45 miles an hour. I'm really sorry to say for all the armor fans out there, it looks like this. Absolutely bulletproof. Nothing damaged whatsoever. As you will see in this video, it takes one heck of a beating. Now, why was I gonna call this video the one thing you shouldn't do to your Traxxas car? Well, the reason for that is because if you make it brushless, under no circumstances, stick with the stock radio. The range is terrible. It's great for the stock car. A minute you go brushless, it runs out of range and goes into things like a curb head-on at 45 miles an hour. That said, I have a feeling this thing is going to be an absolute speed demon when I get to work on it, as I'm going to be doing over the next few days. It is super stable in a straight line with the stock radio. If you turn a little bit too much, it will barrel roll on you in a blink of an eye. Could it do with a little more downforce? Possibly at the rear. So I'm thinking maybe fitting a little wing onto it. The front, I'm glad to say, at speed is simply glued to the ground. It almost sucks itself. So the body shell from the Corvette Stingray, which is probably gonna be capable of well over 200 miles an hour on something like the 06 version of this that they have undoubtedly in coming in the wings, means this body shell is gonna be absolutely great for speed runs, provided you don't turn too much, otherwise it gets scratched a lot. But you're gonna see how that happens in just a second. First of all, let's see why this is the fastest brushless conversion to do in the world. Kind of a bit of clickbait in the title, but not clickbait in the title, because simply put, this is the fastest car I've ever converted to brushless in well under five minutes. Well, time to fit my Banggood special motors to the car, brushless 3300 KV. The ESC 60 amp 2 to 3S LiPo capable should be fairly easy to do. All you've got to do is remove four screws at the back to remove the gear cover. The motor then slides out, two screws to undo on here to take the motor off, pinion to fit on the brush, new brushless motor, two screws underneath the ESC, take the top off the receiver so and simply plug our new ESC into the receiver. And if you're doing this in real time rather than taking the time I'm doing on filming it, it would probably take you around five minutes. New ESC in place, time to put receiver lid back on. Already, time to put the gear cover on. Checking with Traxxas online to go super fast. We do need a 55 tooth spur in here and a 35 tooth pinion. I mean, where are we gonna get those from though? Oh, I think I have a good idea. Okay, well, my bang good, 3300 KV, 60 amp ESC combo is just about ready to go. And I thought maybe I should add a little bit of cooling onto it. And my friend Abel has sent me one of these fans which he's just started making to test. And it's really, I get impressed by an accessory. And you might be thinking, what the heck's this guy talking about? Just wait till I connect this thing. That's like Concord at takeoff. The amount of air this thing is blasting out is absolutely ridiculous. I have no doubt this motor is not gonna overheat with this thing on board and if it Well, as I just tried to say over the top of the noise of this thing, it sounds like Concorde taking off. The amount of air this thing is shifting through is absolutely insane. I use a lot of ancillary products on my RC cars, and I have to say, the airflow around that thing, it's just, it's just blasting off like crazy. I mean, I've never felt anything like the airflow. This fan is kicking out of here. The cooler the motor is, the more efficient it is, the less current it draws through the ESC, and hopefully then the faster we go. Speaking of how fast, let's get a body on and see. Just remember guys, if you like what you see today, don't forget to subscribe.
Okay, well now with the Traxxas Vortec 3.0, so how fast is it with its new brushless setup? Well, first of all, I'm gonna run it on 2S, and if that goes well, then we're gonna run it on 3S. Standing back from the car, because the fan is super efficient, but it's also super noisy. Sounds a bit like the car's got a turbine on board it. Okay, well, it's certainly coming alive on that gearing. It's the speed run gearing, so it's not gonna accelerate like a rocket. It's gonna take a while to build the speed up. Speaking of which, let's put the GPS on and go find out. So, let's see just how fast it is on 2S. Made a little bit more awkward, but all this sort of furniture, if you like, for want of a better word. I would have said that's picked out. So, what do we think? I'm thinking maybe early 40s, possibly 50. We shall see. 37 miles an hour, so not as fast as I thought on that. I think it's time we try 3S. See if it comes a bit more alive. I'm gonna move further away, actually, because I think I'm losing my radio range a bit. Oh, that's coming alive now. Oh. Oh man! How close was I to hitting it on that only piece of furniture around here? Feed that power enrich. Oh man! There goes that new body. Steering, very twitchy. Let's see what we got on that first run. 51 miles an hour. I think that had more in it though, so we'll go again. The car is extremely stable at speed in a straight line. My error there was trying to correct it too much. The steering is very, very twitchy, so I think I am going to upgrade my transmitter on it as the uh, priority on it, for sure, because that was uh, that was just stupid there, Rich. And it should have 55 in it, possibly 60. Oh, man. Out radio range. Wait for it now, wait for it now, here it comes, here it comes. Ouch, this is really gonna hurt. It's morning to go, I've had better. Well, on the plus side, the fan's still running because I can hear it. But worse than that, the GPS has come flying off. I went down this bank looking for the GPS, which I was actually more concerned about than any problem with the car, as the car appears to be in one piece. I'm thinking, well, it can't have fallen on this side. Where on earth is it? Oh, it's there, you idiot, Richie. How easy was that to find? Well, I did search around down there for about five minutes. Hence the yellow tape on it, which I was looking for down there. People talk about armour tough. I would say tracks are tough. Because that was shifting when it hit that kerb head on. In fact, I can't believe it's still in one piece. Okay, I'm thinking for safety now. I might run it this way and then just ease up going up the hill. Okay, let's see if we can squeeze a bit more out of it. I think it's got more in it today. I'm really, really not having a good day. It's just about out of radio range. And... Okay. okay. I do this stuff so you don't have to. A little bit of work to do on the handling of the car and the first thing I'm gonna do is change the radio over. This stock radio is not suited to working with brushless power because it's just too sensitive on the steering. If you're going towards something, you move the slightest bit and the steering swings around so fast it catches you out. And a car, well, super stable in a straight line on high speed corners. If it's trying to corner at 45, it's letting go. And I think the back is a little bit too light, so I might even fit a rear wing on there because I think it could do a little bit of downforce at the rear. I'm very happy with the front, which seems absolutely glued to the ground, but I'm seeing over bumps, the car is lifting like, oh, the back one's come loose as well. The car is lifting, but I'm seeing at the back, when it's hitting a bump, the front's then glued to the floor, but the back is getting kicked up like that, which wouldn't do it any favors as it potentially catch the front on there. 
But today, we've run heading onto a concrete kerb, doing about 45 miles an hour, and it's escaped unscathed. Bit of few scratches across the top of the box. Now, would you say, having got back to the car with it, the motor is like virtually cool to the touch. I've been giving it full throttle on there, and this fan is actually is just, just ridiculous. I expected it to be like, it's not even lukewarm. Never mind hot, outstanding. Link to that below the video. So as ever on this channel, I show you the bad as well as the good on there. Um, I'm mortified to have scratched this gorgeous body on there, but my other expression is I do this stuff so you don't have to. If you're gonna convert one of these cars to brushless, swap out the stock radio at the same time, put something in there with some adjustability so you can dial a steering jewel right, right down because the steering was the main issue. If I went to correct it, I was wanting to put a little bit of correction on to get around something, it would snap hard left, hard right and flip over. That's purely down to the radio, not down to the car itself, which does handle very, very well indeed. My next step is probably going to be to fit a rear wing to the car as I have a feeling it's definitely getting a little bit light at the rear. The front seems glued to the ground and yet it hits a bump. The back kicks up in the air and the front stays glued to the, the front container bump. So it seems the air at the front of the car is working well and pushing the nose down, which is great because that is the one death of speed run cars when they flip over at speed on there. So I'm quite happy with the front of the car, but I do feel I need to put a little bit of downforce on the back of the car. My original Traxxas Fortec 2.0 was more than good enough for well over 120 miles an hour or possibly 140 miles an hour if nobody from law enforcement is watching this video. I'm going to be taking a lot of the goodies off the Fortec 2.0 which is behind me on the wall there and fitting them to this car. But if anyone has got out there who's got a Fortec 2.0 is considering buying this but sat on the fence maybe a bit worried about the traditional death wobble from the car where when you floor it with brushless the rear of the car gets out of shape and it slams it hard left or hard right into a curb this car does not suffer from that same tendency Traxxas have cured the death wobble problem I do have a 6S capable motor which will fit into this car sat on the side so should I fit that people have your send a comment section below thanks for watching well thumbs up if you like this video guys, post any comments you might have in the comment section below the video and hit the circle below to subscribe and if you do hit the circle don't forget to hit the bell.